Alrighty, so another 30 day cybersecurity challenge. For the next 30 days, I'm gonna be attempting to play Hack the Box. Now, I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to CTFs, really. I've played a limited number of CTFs, but in today's video, I'm gonna be playing Hack the Box and see what the heck happens. So let's overview the project and get into my five weeks of training. Here in front of me is my project overview page. Like I said, Hack the Box is basically a cybersecurity CTF training platform and i'm going to be using the hacking labs training to go through and try to find hidden flags now my overall goal is to learn more about open source tools scripts and just the overall methodology to find these hidden flags which have a string of text in them and, and basically that means you've pwned the box uh, now my project is broken up into four total weeks and I'm going to be playing two different areas on Hack the Box. My first week, I'm going to be creating my CTF for Hack the Box Attacker Lab environment, which basically is a virtual box Kali machine. And then in the subsequent week two and three, I'm going to be playing Starting Point, which is a cool little introductory uh, exercises that Hack the Box has for beginners. So as you can see in front of me, I've already completed some of the tiers here, but it's broken down into three different tiers and each of the tiers focuses on a different set of technologies such as server message block or uh, MongoDB, or it could be any sort of service. So it gives you just an overview of how to approach these boxes on the Hack the Box platform. After completing starting points three tiers, uh, during weeks three and four, I'm going to be attempting to play the actual boxes in the hacking labs. So Hack the Box has active machines and they have retired boxes. Uh, and as a free tier subscriber here, uh, I get access to the active machines as well as a limited number of retired machines. What I'm gonna attempt to do is walk through some of these very easy machines uh, and maybe try to look at the write-ups, but try not to until I get stuck. So in total, I'm gonna have four machines that I've completed as well as all of the starting machine boxes. So yeah, I have no idea what I'm doing with this project. Hopefully it's somewhat interesting and I can learn some new things. But uh, yeah, so on to week one, getting started with my hacking lab and starting points tier zero. Setting up the hacking lab was straightforward. I loaded my Kali Linux virtual machine onto VirtualBox and ensured I could connect to Hack the Box using the supplied open VPN file within the terminal. Then I was on to the starting point sections. Starting point tier zero was relatively straightforward. Each machine includes a self-guided walkthrough overviewing a specific service such as FTP, SMB, SQL Server, and many more. And using the common open source tools provided, you could probe and log into these machines to fetch the flag. Most hack the box machines have two flags, a user and root. The user flag is frequently found once you're able to access the backend machine. And then the root flag is discovered once you escalate your privileges to sudo or root within the box. All right, so week one is finished with the hack the box challenge. So far, it's been pretty easy, relatively straightforward. So here is what I've done so far. All right, so as highlighted in my project schedule, the two things that I needed to do were build a hacking lab and then complete tier zero starting point challenges. I've successfully done both. Basically just have Kali Linux up here and that's all I did, just load this into VirtualBox. And then I have completed tier zero all three modules are completed. There are also some subsequent VIP not modules, but I don't have VIP access right this moment. A component I'm enjoying so far are these written guides. They go into detail and the overall methodology with gaining foothold, initial access, and really just going through the thought process of being an attacker. And I really appreciated that. Uh, most of these items are pretty relatively straightforward things that I've used before, so it's pretty basic, but I'm hoping to get into some more advanced concepts in tier one and tier two, and really get into poning the boxes and using no written guides. Well, hopefully. My hopes for week two is to continue to learn different tools, different technologies, and really just kind of understand the methodology that it comes to approaching these boxes. Uh, so yeah, on to week two here, and we'll see what happens. 
Starting points one and two were a little bit more advanced. In both tiers, you learn more about enumeration, lateral movement, and privilege escalation techniques, including the various attacks and tools you can use to deploy on these boxes. Open source tools such as Nmap for probing open ports, GoBuster for web directory enumeration, Hashcat and John the Ripper for hash and password cracking, and using different attack techniques such as using default credentials, SQL injection, local file inclusion, and spawning reverse shells with PHP are all overviewed in these tiers. It was nice to have a refresher on these tools and how to deploy them in the context of the hack the box environment. All right, so I have just completed all three tiers on starting point. Uh, I've enjoyed the steps to getting here. What I really liked about Starting Point was that they give you an overview of various command line tools and tools in general that you can use to attack these boxes. In addition, I liked how they laid out the methodologies in the walkthrough guides. So each section has a specific step you're doing, such as privilege escalation, or at the very beginning, enumeration or exploitation. So I like how it kind of goes through each of those steps and each step has a set of tools and, and kind of thought process that goes into it. What I do wish that they had for the starting point uh, walkthroughs was more of a thought process with uh, trying different attack vectors. For example, in the exploitation phase, perhaps instead of just giving you the exploit, maybe they could show, hey, let's try this path first and then this path, and then eventually we get to the correct path, which could be path D. Because I feel like oftentimes in CTFs, it's not as straightforward. You have to try various different thought processes in order to actually craft and find a vulnerable system or application on the system. So that is my biggest complaint with starting point, but overall, I've been impressed with how Hack the Box has laid this out. With starting point tiers complete, it was time to walk through the retired and active machines available on Hacktabox. I chose to pursue 2 million in Keeper as my week 3 machines. 2 million was an easy difficulty Linux box where you had to break into their legacy backend system by generating an invite code to create a Hackbox account. And this is actually something you had to do back in the day. Once inside the system, you had to abuse the included API to get remote code execution, spawn a remote shell, and then escalate privileges with a Linux kernel vulnerability. Alrighty, so I just finished the 2 million machine on Hack the Box. This was my first retired machine in playing it. I got about uh, maybe 10 minutes in and I looked at the write-up on Google, just a Medium article. And so this box was sort of interesting. I actually ended up getting access to the Hack the Box platform based off of some previous knowledge. Okay, the long story short is, I definitely don't know what I'm doing when it comes to CTFs, but this is really a good, interesting start. And for me personally, I'm gonna write down a whole bunch of notes uh, so that I can use this moving forward when it comes to leveraging API endpoints and and all the other little nitty gritty tricks. So uh, retired machine, two million is finished next. So uh, on to the next week. Three weeks of dedicated hardcore training behind me. It was finally time. Time to see if I could actually do this, which, you know, no. Week four, it was time to test my knowledge and apply what I had learned to the two boxes, Pilgrimage and Cozy Hosting, both with very easy ratings. I had intended not to use write up which escalation. You may be noticing a pattern with the techniques or steps used throughout this entire series. One must perform these steps to successfully pwn the box. These include enumeration, where one must learn what type of services are used in the box, versions of the service, and acquire a general understanding of that box. Next would be initial access. In this step, one must exploit a misconfiguration, default or weak credentials, or a vulnerable service to get access to the box. This involves creating a reverse shell where you set up a listener on your hacker box, upload some code, have the vulnerable service reach out to your box and establish a connection. Next is reconnaissance. Once you have a foothold on the system, you must perform additional enumeration on the box to learn about. All right, so I have completed my hack the box challenge. I enjoy the challenge. I will be honest, I did not complete it in 30 days. It was more like a 60 day challenge due to laziness, but I still, you know, went through it. And uh, what I really enjoyed about the hack the box challenge was just getting hands on practice with active kind of pen testing type methodologies use some different open source tools to attack the boxes and 
it's it's the thought process that I think is really beneficial for a defender like myself in my career. But uh, I think Hack the Box really does a good job of showing how you do that, starting out from the starting point modules and then slowly transitioning into the retired and active machines where you can pwn some very easy boxes. So overall, I recommend that you do this challenge, even if it's over the course of 30 days or 60 days, it doesn't really matter. It's a fun challenge and completely free to do on Hack the Box platform. Uh, and well, yeah, I guess until the next video, have a good day.